The Spanish conquest of the Musca took place from 1537 to 1540. The Musca were the inhabitants of the central Andean highlands of Colombia before the arrival of the Spanish conquistadors. They were organized in a loose confederation of different rulers, the Zipa of Bacata, with his headquarters in Funza, the Zac of Hunza, the Araka of the sacred city of the Sun Shugamuxi, the Tundama of Tundama, and several independent caciques. The leaders of the confederation at the time of conquest were Zipa Tiskesusa, Zac Quemanchitocha, Araka Shugamuxi and Tundama in the northernmost portion of their territories. The Musca were organized in small communities of circular enclosures CA in their language Miscuban, literally, language of the people, with a central square where the bohio of the cacique was located. They were called, salt people, because of their extraction of salt in various locations throughout their territories, mainly in Zipaquira, Nemocon and Tausa. For the main part self-sufficient in their well-organized economy, the Musca traded with the European conquistadors valuable products as gold, tumbaga a copper-silver-gold alloy and emeralds with their neighboring indigenous groups. In the Tenza Valley, to the east of the Altiplano Cundiboyacans where the majority of the Musca lived, they extracted emeralds in Chivar and Somondoco. The economy of the Musca was rooted in their agriculture with main products maize, yuca, potatoes and various other cultivations elaborated on elevated fields in their language called ta. Agriculture had started around 3000 BCE on the Altiplano, following the pre-ceramic Herrera period and a long epoch of hunter-gatherers since the late Pleistocene. The earliest archaeological evidence of inhabitation in Colombia, and one of the oldest in South America, has been found in El Abra, dating to around 12,500 years BP. The main part of the Musca civilization was concentrated on the Bogotá savanna, a flat high plain in the eastern ranges of the Andes, far away from the Caribbean coast. The savanna was an ancient lake, that existed until the latest Pleistocene and formed a highly fertile soil for their agriculture. The Musca were a deeply religious civilization with a polytheistic society and an advanced astronomical knowledge, which was represented in their complex lunisolar calendar. Men and women had specific and different tasks in their relatively egalitarian society, while the women took care of the sewing, preparation of food, the extraction of salt, and the elaboration of mantles and pottery, the men were assigned to harvesting, warfare and hunting. The Getcha warriors were tasked with the defense of the Musca territories, mainly against their western neighbors, the Muzo emerald people, and the Bellicose Ponche. To impress their enemies, the Musca warriors wore mummies of important ancestors on their backs, while fighting. In their battles, the men used spears, poisoned arrows and golden knives. Although gold deposits were not abundant on the Altiplano, through trading the Musca obtained large amounts of the precious metal which they elaborated into fine art, of which the Musca raft and the many tunjos offer pieces were the most important. The Musca raft pictures the initiation ritual of the new Zipa, that took place in Lake Guadavita. When the Spanish who resided in the coastal city of Santa Marta, founded by Rodrigo de Bastidas in 1525, were informed about this legend, a large expedition in the quest for this El Dorado city or man of gold was organized in the spring of 1536. A delegation of more than 900 men left the tropical city of Santa Marta and went on a harsh expedition through the heartlands of Colombia in search of El Dorado and the civilization that produced all this precious gold. The leader of the first and main expedition under Spanish flag was Gonzalo Jiménez de Quesada, with his brother Hernán II in command. Several other soldiers were participating in the journey, who would later become encomenderos and take part in the conquest of other parts of Colombia. Other contemporaneous expeditions into the unknown interior of the Andes, all searching for the mythical land of gold, were starting from later Venezuela, led by Bavarian and other German conquistadors and from the south, starting in the previously founded Kingdom of Quito in what is now Ecuador. The conquest of the Musca started in March 1537, when the greatly reduced troops of de Quesada entered Musca territories in Chipata, the first settlement they founded on March 8. The expedition went further inland and up the slopes of the Altiplano Cundiboyacans into later Boyaca and Cundinamarca. The towns of Monaquira and Guacheta and Lenguazac were founded before the conquistadors arrived at the northern edge of the Bogotá savanna in Suesca. En route towards the domain of Zipa Tisquesusa, the Spanish founded Cajica and Chia. In April 1537 they arrived at Funza, where Tisquesusa was beaten by the Spanish. 
This formed the onset for further expeditions, starting a month later towards the eastern Tenza Valley and the northern territories of Zak Kwemenchitocha. On August 20, 1537, the Zak was submitted in his Bohio in Hunza. The Spanish continued their journey northeastward into the Araka Valley, where the Araka Shugamuxi fell to the Spanish troops and the Sun Temple was accidentally burned by two soldiers of the Army of de Quesada in early September. Meanwhile, other soldiers from the conquest expedition went south and conquered Pasca and other settlements. The Spanish leader returned with his men to the Bogotá savanna and planned new conquest expeditions executed in the second half of 1537 and first months of 1538. On August 6, 1538, Gonzalo Jiménez de Quesada founded Bogotá as the capital of the new Kingdom of Granada, named after his home region of Granada, Spain. That same month, on August 20, the Zipa who succeeded his brother Tisquesusa upon his death, Sagipa, allied with the Spanish to fight the Panche, eternal enemies of the Musca in the southwest. In the Battle of Tokarima, the Allied forces claimed victory over the bellicose western neighbors. In late 1538, other conquest undertakings resulted in more founded settlements in the heart of the Andes. Two other expeditions that were taking place at the same time, of de Balalcazar from the south and Fetterman from the east, reached the newly founded capital and the three leaders embarked in May 1539 on a ship on the Magdalena River that took them to Cartagena and from there back to Spain. Gonzalo Jiménez de Quesada had installed his younger brother Hernán as new governor of Bogotá and the latter organized new conquest campaigns in search of El Dorado during the second half of 1539 and 1540. His captain Gonzalo Suárez Rendón founded Tunja on August 6, 1539 and Captain Baltasar Maldonado, who had served under de Balalcazar, defeated the cacique of Tundama at the end of 1539. The last Zac Aquamanzac was decapitated in early 1540, establishing the new rule over the former Musca Confederation. Knowledge of the conquest expeditions in Musca territories has been provided and compiled by Gonzalo Jiménez de Quesada, main conquistador, and scholars Pedro de Aguado, Juan Rodríguez Frial, Juan de Castellanos, Pedro Simón, Lucas Fernández de Pedrajita, Joaquín Acosta, Liborio Zerda and Jorge Gamboa Mendoza. Pre-Columbian history The pre-Columbian history of the Altiplano Cundiboyacans started around 12,500 years BP with the oldest human evidence found at El Abra, near Zipaquira. Other archaeological sites of the pre-ceramic are Tequendama, Tibito, Chiquua and Aguazuc. At the time of the arrival of the first hunter-gatherers, the area was still populated by Pleistocene megafauna, such as Cuvieranus, Haplomastodon and Equus amarhippus. Herrera period During the Herrera period, that is commonly defined as from 800 BCE to 800 AD, the agriculture that started before was further developed. Evidence for this has been uncovered in among others the Thomas van der Hammen Reserve, named after Dutch geologist and botanist Thomas van der Hammen. It was in the Herrera period that pottery became widespread and from the 5th century AD onwards, the habit of mummification was common for the higher classes. Archaeological evidence of the Herrera period has been found in numerous places on the Altiplano Cundiboyacens, among others in Sopo, Socha, USME, IZA, Gamesa, Facatativa, Piedras del Tunjo Archaeological Park, Monaquira, El Infiernito, Chia, Chita, Chiscas, Soda, Jericho, Sativasar, Covaracia, Sativa Norte. And and El Cocai, the site in Socha is one of the most important finds from the Herrera period, dating from 400 BCE onwards, into the age of the Musca. At the site, the remains of 2,200 individual people, 274 complete ceramic pots, stone tools, seeds of cotton, maize, beans and caruba, 634 fragmented and intact spindles and 100 tunjos not used for offerings were found. Topic. Musca Confederation The Musca Confederation is the accepted name for the territories inhabited by the Musca on the Altiplano Cundiboyacens and neighboring Tenza and Ubac valleys to the east. 
The confederation of rulers, with as most important the Zippa of Bakata, Zak of Hunza, Araka of Shugamuxi and the Tundama of Tundama, among various independent caciques, covered an area of approximately 25,000 square kilometers 9, square miles. Population estimates range from 300,000 to 2 million inhabitants. The Musca were mainly a society based on agriculture on the fertile soils of the valleys of the Altiplano, the result of Pleistocene lacustrine sediments. Called the Salt People, they were also known as producing salt from halite brines extracted from salt mines in Zipaquira, Nemocon, and Tausa, an activity that was the task of the Musca women exclusively and had started in the Herrera period around 250 BC. Trading of various raw products, such as cotton, that grew in lower altitude terrains to the north, east and west of the Altiplano, produced the basis for their art and cloth and ceramics production. The Musca were unique in South American civilizations in their production of golden coins, called Tehuelo, other than the other three great civilizations of pre-Columbian Americas, the Aztec, Maya and Inca, the people did not construct large stone architecture, yet built their bohios and temples of clay, wooden poles and reed in small communities on artificially elevated areas. The Musca adored various deities, of which the moon personalized by Chia and her husband, the sun solar god Sway, were the most important. Two main temples were constructed to honor these deities, in Chia the Moon Temple and in Sacred City of the Sun Shugamuxi the Sun Temple respectively. Both temples were built according to astronomical parameters. Most of the other sacred sites were natural in character, the many lakes that existed on the Altiplano, Aguac, Suesca, Fuquane, Toda, the Sicha Lakes, and the most important, Lake Guadavita. It was in this circular lake, located at an altitude of 3,000 meters 9, feet within the boundaries of present-day municipality of Sesquile, that the initiation ritual of the new Zippa was performed. This ceremony, where the new Zippa would cover himself in gold dust and from a raft would jump into the ice-cold waters, is represented in the famous Musca raft. The festivities of this ritual were surrounded with music, singing and dances and accompanied by large quantities of chicha, the indigenous alcoholic beverage made of fermented maize. Also during the construction of the houses, overseen by their god Nenkatakoa, the people drank chicha. The golden ritual formed the basis for the not-so-much legend of El Dorado, the Man of Gold, also interpreted as the City of Gold. The specialized goldworking of the Musca was known far outside the Confederation, and many golden offer pieces tunjos have been found in various sites, making them the most common objects in museums around the world. The area of the Musca did not contain many gold deposits, and their gold was obtained mostly through trade with their neighbors at the frequent markets they organized in various settlements throughout the Altiplano. Emeralds were other precious pieces, both extracted within the Confederation in the Tenza Valley and traded with their western neighbors, the Muzo, called the Emerald People. The legend of El Dorado, the fine goldworking, abundance of salt and emeralds, and the advanced status of the Musca society formed the main motive for the Spanish conquistadors to leave the relative safety of Santa Marta and commence the strenuous expedition inland. <laughs> <laughs> Spanish exploration The first time the mainland of the continent of South America was sighted by European eyes, was at the third voyage of Christopher Columbus in August 1498. During the first half of the month, he explored the Paria Peninsula, presently part of eastern Venezuela. On this voyage, Columbus saw the mouth of the Orinoco River, which water mass he rightly interpreted as a sign the continent must be large. The Orinoco River drainage basin extends to the west into the terrain of the Musca, via the rivers Meta and its tributaries Langupa, Upia and Cusiana. Although the country of Colombia is named after Columbus, he never saw the land pertaining to present-day Colombia, while on his fourth and final voyage, he landed in Panama that until 1903 was part of the current republic. The second time the Orinoco was spotted, was by Amerigo Vespucci who took part in the first expedition that landed on Colombian soil, that of Alonso de Ojeda. Vespucci, as part of a Portuguese expedition, went east and south from the Orinoco and de Ojeda with three ships went west. The first Colombian landmass sighted by de Ojeda was the peninsula of La Guajira in late August 1499. De Ojeda misinterpreted this part of later Colombia as an island, that he called Coquivacoa currently known as Cabo de la Vila, Cape of Sails. 
De Ojeda's second voyage commenced in January 1502 and following the same route as his first, he landed on the Colombian mainland on May 3, 1502, founding the first colony in South America, Santa Cruz today part of Bahia Honda. The colony didn't last more than three months due to various factors. The indigenous Wayu resisted ferociously and the Spanish explorers couldn't find enough food and fresh water in the barren desert region to maintain the colony. De Ojeda set sail towards Santo Domingo in Hispaniola. His failure to establish a colony for the Spanish crown condemned him to pay large sums upon arrival in Hispaniola. This made it impossible for him to perform new expeditions for some years. While De Ojeda was underway to Colombia, his rival Christopher Columbus started his fourth voyage, with 30 ships from Cadiz on May 11, 1502. Columbus landed on the previously unknown island of Martinique on June 15 and he continued his journey northwestward to reach Santo Domingo on June 29. As he was denied port in the Caribbean capital, Columbus sailed in the direction of Jamaica and from there to Guanaja, one of the Bay Islands off the coast of later Honduras, arriving one month later. On August 14, 1502, he landed as first European on the mainland of Central America, at a settlement that would later be called Puerto Castilla. Over the course of the next two months, Columbus explored the Caribbean mosquito coast of later Honduras, Nicaragua and Costa Rica, reaching the Bay of Almirante on October 16. In this region, currently known as Bocas del Toro, he made first contact with the Chibcha-speaking Nabe people, learning about the resources of gold. After getting in conflict with the cacique of the area, El Quibian, Columbus and his men had to flee the region and set sail back to Hispaniola on April 16, 1503. After sighting the Cayman Islands on May 10, he arrived in Jamaica on June 25. Nicolas de Avando y Caceres, who had sailed to the New World on February 13, 1502 with 32 ships, the biggest fleet of the time, had become governor of Hispaniola. A distant relative of him, the 19-year young Hernán Cortés from Medellín, Spain, left for Hispaniola in 1504. He would later become famous as the conquistador who brought down the Aztec Empire. Cortés's mother Catalina Pizarro Altamirano was related to the family of Francisco Pizarro, the later conquistador of the Inca Empire. The first cities After unsuccessful attempts to establish Spanish settlements in La Guajira and San Sebastián de Araba close to the present municipality Nicocli on January 20, 1510, the first remaining settlement was Turbaco, founded on December 8, 1510. The first cities founded on Colombian soil that still exist today, were Santa Marta and its northern Corregimiento Taganga on July 29, 1525 by Rodrigo de Bastidas and Cartagena, then called San Sebastián de Cartagena by Pedro de Heredia on June 1, 1533. Shortly before Cartagena, Mahates was founded on April 17, 1533. Malambo, Atlantico was discovered in 1529 by Geronimo de Mello and Silos, Norte de Santander by Ambrosius Ehinger in 1530. In 1535, Tolu and Cincelejo, Sucre were founded by Alonso de Heredia on July 25, and Antonio de la Torre y Miranda on October 4 respectively. In the south of what is now Colombia, Yumbo, Valle del Cauca was founded in 1536 by Miguel Muñoz and in the same year Cali July 25 by Sebastián de Balalcazar. The latter also founded Popayán in December of the same year. Jamundi, south of Cali, was founded on March 23 by Juan de Impudia and Pedro de Añasco. Colombian settlements founded before the main conquest <inaudible> Conquest of the Musca The first expedition into the terrains controlled by the Musca started on April 6, 1536. The army of conquistadors was led by Morano Gonzalo Jiménez de Quesada with his brother Hernán Pérez de Quesada second in command. Other notable captains and soldiers were Gonzalo Suárez Rendón, Juan de San Martín, Lázaro Fonti who would become the lover of Zoratama, Martín Galeano, Bartolomé Camacho Zambrano, Orton Velázquez de Velasco, Antonio de la Brigia, Gonzalo Macias, Juan de Céspedes and Juan Maldonado. 
Historians usually divide the journey, filled with difficulty in two stages, the first from Santa Marta to Barrancabermeja, and the second from Barranca to the Musca territory. Expedition from Santa Marta to Musca territories <inaudible> Soldiers of the first expedition Around 800 soldiers left Santa Marta on April 6, 1536, of whom only 162 survived when the troops reached Funza, one year and two weeks later. Expedition from the east and southwest were undertaken simultaneously. Topic: 1535 to 39 years of joint expeditions from three sides. In the years around the main expedition of the De Quesadas, two other major exploration routes into the heart of Colombia were followed, one under German order, headed by Fetterman from the northeast, and one led by de Balalcazar from the south. <laughs> <laughs> Leaders and soldiers of de Balalcazar and Fetterman Topic. 1536 – The harsh expedition towards Musca territory The first indigenous group that was submitted to the Spanish crown were the Tirona, who inhabited the area around Santa Marta, with their descendants presently living on the slopes of the Sierra Nevada de Santa Marta and in Tirona National Park. On April 6, 1536, triggered by the stories of the mythical, "...city of gold." El Dorado, Gonzalo Jiménez de Quesada organized two groups of conquistadors to set foot towards the inner highlands of the Colombian Andes, as first European explorers. The army with the brothers de Quesada and more than 700 soldiers and 80 horses went first east and then south passing the Sierra Nevada de Santa Marta on their right hand over land and another, of more than 200 men, embarked in boats and ascended the Magdalena River from Cienaga, in search of its origin. The list of the soldiers that eventually made it to Funza has been compiled by Juan Flores de Acaris The land army was led by Gonzalo with Hernán II in command. The first indigenous group encountered, were the Chimila. Continuing south, the troops had to cross inhospitable terrains full of creeks and part of their supplies and equipment was lost when crossing the Araguani River. The difficulties of the expedition only increased when the conquerors went further inland. They reached the indigenous settlement of Chiriguana, lost their indigenous guides brought from the coast and it took them eight days to reach the lakes of Tamalamec. The indigenous people there, who had suffered from the conquest expedition of Bavarian conquistador Ambrosius Ehinger six years earlier, revolted defending the local population. They were submitted to the rule of de Quesada. The troops rested in this area for a while and Gonzalo sent a delegation to the Magdalena River to see if the boats had arrived. The messengers returned with sad news, the majority of boats had shipwrecked in the mouth of the Magdalena and the soldiers who survived and made it onshore fell prey to the poisoned arrows of the indigenous groups and the crocodiles along the river. The remaining ships left for Cartagena de Indias. Orton Velázquez de Velasco and Luis de Mangeres made it back to Santa Marta where they obtained new boats. They joined the army of de Quesada at the banks of the Magdalena two months later. The lower parts of the Magdalena River were inhabited by numerous indigenous groups who resisted the Spanish conquistadors with canoes, fighting using poisoned arrows. This held the Spanish troops back, and the reduced army joined forces on land in Sampalon, where they had lost already 100 men. The two conquistadors who reached this area first were Juan de Sancte Martin and Juan de Cespedes. Many of the disgruntled soldiers wanted to return to the relative safety of Santa Marta, but Father Juan Domingo de las Casas persuaded the soldiers to continue, at the risk of being called cowards if they refused. The expedition split in two again, with one part ascending further the Magdalena River and the main part through the thick forests of the right bank of the river. Here they encountered many natural dangers, such as jaguars, wild boar, snakes, mosquitoes, spiders, stinky grisones and the many spines and poisonous plants in the forest. Even anteaters had attacked the troops and almost killed a horse. Pioneers with machetes were sent ahead to create pathways through the dense jungle, a task that could take up to eight days for a path crossed by the army in hours. The troops took shelter from the heavy rains below trees and ate fruits and wild roots to survive. 
Many of the soldiers became ill and died due to snake bites and jaguar attacks. They crossed the many creeks and rivers tributary to the Magdalena swimming, where the Caymans formed another risk. Apart from the natural hazards, also the indigenous people attacked the Spanish with their arrows, clubs and canoes. At night, when the soldiers were sleeping unprotected in their hammocks, the jaguars attacked and killed them, and in many cases the screams of the men were not heard because of the thunderstorms. After eight months of horrible jungle experience where they advanced just 150 kilometers, 93 miles, the heavily reduced troops reached La Tora, now called Barrancabermeja. Easier to defend, the settlement was taken as a place of rest for about three months and to bury the 100 more dead soldiers of which many were thrown in the river to become food for the crocodiles. Plagued by the hot climate, mosquitoes and illnesses and conscious that the broad river extended upwards, the expedition continued south. Gonzalo Jiménez de Quesada was convinced they would reach the lands full of gold they heard about at the Caribbean coast and motivated his delegation of soldiers, that at this time had an average age of 27 years old, to walk on. From Barrancabermeja, the troops followed the course of the open river, but soon discovered it was not navigable anymore. Gonzalo decided to continue over land and they found a canoe with ceramic pots with salt and cloths. This was a sign they came closer to a great civilization and it motivated the troops to march on. Gonzalo ordered 40 of his weakest men and 150 soldiers to return to Santa Marta. Those who returned, fell into the hands of the indigenous groups along the way and few of them made the journey back to the Caribbean city. The brothers de Quesada marched on with 70 of the original horses and sent ahead the conquistadors Juan de Céspedes, Antonio de Labrija and Alférez Anton de Olaya. They found a valley with scattered houses. Early 1537, after passing through Aguada, the expedition reached Chipata, the first settlement of the Musca, where Father Juan Domingo de las Casas held his first sermon. The climate of Chipata, at 1,800 meters (5,900 feet) altitude, was much more pleasant than the hot lower valleys of the open river. And Gonzalo decided to stay for five months in the town to allow his soldiers to rest and regain strength. The local musca of Chipata brought the Spanish soldiers new mantles, as the ones taken from Santa Marta had worn down due to the harsh circumstances of their expedition. Some of the members of the expedition were already half-naked. In Chipata, the Spanish for the first time learned to drink chicha, the fermented alcoholic beverage of the musca. Using the enslaved indigenous people of the coast who understood forms of chibcha, Gonzalo and Hernán were informed where the civilization producing those fine mantles and salt was located. Topic: 1536 to 1537 route by the conquistadors. Topic: 1537, the year of the Musca conquest. Chipata was the first settlement of the later New Kingdom of Granada, founded by Gonzalo Jiménez de Quesada on March 8, 1537. Shortly after, the rested and reinforced troops set foot to higher terrains towards the south. Different from the scattered and unorganized indigenous groups they encountered before, advancing into the Musca Confederation, they found a much better organized society and economy. The agriculture of the Musca impressed the Spanish conquistadors and made them even more curious to find out who was the leader of the civilization. While the Musca regarded the European conquerors with distrust, they were also curious about them and where they came from. The Spanish settlers, still around 150 kilometers (93 miles) away from the southern Musca capital Bacata, continued south and reached the Altiplano Cundiboyacense, where they marched through the Ubate Chiquinquira Valley, passing through Barbosa, close to Saboya. That town would later become the first encomienda of Pedro de Galeano, the brother of Martín Galeano, who were both taking part in the expedition. Saboya means in Chibcha, taste of the mantles, referring to the mantles that were elaborated by the Musca from traded cotton. Following the course of the Suarez River, the army continued south towards Simajaca, the first settlement in the modern department of Cundinamarca. The troops stayed on the eastern bank of the Suarez River and reached Lake Fuquain, presently much smaller than in the 1530s. The water level estimated in the time of the expedition was 10 meters 33 feet to 15 meters 49 feet higher than today. The caciques of the settlements Simajaca and, further along the route Fuquain and Tausa, were loyal to the Zippa of Bacata and the conquistadors were increasingly interested in the richness of that area. 
After Fuquane, they entered Guacheta and founded the modern town on March 12, continued to Lenguazac that was founded the next day, and arrived in Suesca, founding that city on March 14. Suesca would become the seat of Gonzalo Jiménez and his place of death 42 years later. After Suesca, the expedition entered Nemocan, the second most important salt-producing town in the Musca Confederation. When the troops of de Quesada arrived in Nemocan, the local inhabitants brought them food like deer, pigeons, rabbits, guinea pigs, beans, tubers and other aliments, new to the Spanish. When the troops of de Quesada were in Nemocan, they were first attacked by the Musca Gecha warriors of the Zipa. The Spanish soldiers beat the Musca warriors and continued southwest across the Bogotá savanna towards Cajica. Here they had an overview of the vast plains of the savanna, dotted with farmfields on elevated terraces. The Intermontane Valley was populated with numerous bohios, circular houses with a conical roof made of reed. The climate of the high plains was pleasant for the Spanish troops and Gonzalo Jiménez de Quesada baptized the flatlands Valle de los Alcazaras. The expedition halted in Chia where they spent the Holy Week. After that week in April 1537, de Quesada ordered his men towards Funza, the site of the domain of the Zipa. Although the army of the brothers de Quesada was reduced to 170 men, the hundreds of Gecha warriors couldn't resist the superior Spanish arms and were defeated. In the meantime, Zipa Tisquesusa sent messengers to the caciques in the Musca Confederation to inform them of the arrival of the light-skinned heavily armed men. The caciques considered the invaders sacred and didn't dare to attack them. Funza was conquered and founded on April 20, 1537. Of the more than 900 soldiers who left Santa Marta a year earlier, only 162 survived the harsh expedition. Topic. 1537 route and foundations Topic <inaudible> <inaudible> April 1537 conquest of Bacada The arrival of the Spanish conquerors was revealed to Tisquesusa by the Mohan Papan from the village of Ubac He told the Musca ruler that foreigners were coming and Tisquesusa would die bathing in his own blood when Tisquesusa was informed of the advancing invasion of the Spanish soldiers, he sent a spy to Suesca to find out more about their army strength, weapons and with how many warriors they could be beaten. The Zipa left the capital Bacata and took shelter in Nemocan which directed the Spanish troops to there, during this march attacked by more than 600 Musca warriors. When Tisquesusa retreated in his fort in Cajica he allegedly told his men he would not be able to combat against the strong Spanish army in possession of weapons that produced thunder and lightning. He chose to return to Bacata and ordered the capital to be evacuated, resulting in an abandoned site when the Spanish arrived. In search for the Musca ruler the conquistadores went north to find Tisquesusa in the surroundings of Facatativa where they attacked him at night. Tisquesusa was thrusted by the sword of one of de Quesada's soldiers but without knowing he was the Zipa he let him go, after taking the expensive mantle of the ruler. Tisquesusa fled hurt into the mountains past Facatadiva, in the west of the Bogotá savanna, and died of his wounds there. His body was only discovered a year later because of the black vultures circling over it. Upon the death of Tisquesusa, his son Hama and daughter Machinza hid the sister of the Zipa, USACA, in one of the settlements on the Bogotá savanna. When one of the conquistadors, Juan Maria Cortés, found out about this, his prepared a battle to gain control over the area. At that moment, USACA appeared and resisted against the Spanish conqueror. Legend tells that he dropped his weapons and fell in love with her, eventually marrying the sister of Tisquesusa and they were baptized in Usakan, meaning, Land of the Sun, in Maiscuban. This formed the start of the construction of a colonial village, today part of the capital and known for its colonial architecture and parks. Topic. May August 1537 route towards Hunza through the Tenza Valley Gonzalo Topic <inaudible> August 1537 conquest of Hunza When Gonzalo Jiménez de Quesada found out the caciques were conspiring against him he sent out several expeditions of soldiers his captain Juan de Céspedes went south to conquer Fusagasuga and to found Pasca on July 15, 1537. 
Hernan was sent north and Gonzalo himself went northeast, to search for the mythical land of gold El Dorado. There he didn't find golden cities, but emeralds, the Musca were extracting in Chivar and Somondoco. First foundation was Engadiva, presently a locality of Bogotá, on May 22, 1537. Passing through Suba, Chia, Cajica, Tocansipa, Gachansipa, Guadavita and Sesquile, he arrived in Chaconta, founding the modern town on June 9. The journey went eastward into the Tenza Valley through Mashita, Tibirita, Guadic, Sudatenza and Tenza, founded on San Juan, June 24. On the same day, Hernan founded Sutatausa. Gonzalo continued northwest through La Capilla and Umbita. He arrived in Termaque that he founded on July 20. In August 1537, Gonzalo Jimenez de Quesada entered the territories of the Zac, who ruled from Hunza. When the Spanish conquerors entered the outskirts of Hunza and found a hill with poles where bodies were dangling, they named it Cerro de la Horca. Gallo hill. At the time of the conquest, Cuemanchatocha was the Zac and he ordered his men to not submit to the European invaders or show them the way to his bohio. He sent messengers to the Spanish conquistadors with valuable peace offers. While this was happening, Cuemanchatocha had hidden his treasures from the Spanish. Hunza was located in a valley not as green as the Bogotá savanna. The advantage of the Spanish weaponry and the use of the horses quickly beat the Musca warriors. When Gonzalo arrived at the main bohío of Cuemanchatocha, he found the Musca ruler sitting in his throne and surrounded by his closest companions. All men were dressed in expensive mantles and adorned with golden crowns. On August 20, 1537, the Spanish beat the Zac and the big and strong Musca ruler was taken captive to Suesca. There he was tortured and the Spanish soldiers hoped he would reveal where he hid his precious properties. The absence of Cuemanchatocha paved the route for his nephew Aquamanzac to succeed him as ruler of the northern Musca, a practice common in Musca traditions. When Cuemanchatocha was finally released from captivity in Suesca, he fled to Ramiriki, where he died shortly after. The Spanish soldiers found gold, emeralds, silver, mantles and other valuables in Tunja. They were not able to take all the precious pieces and many were secretly taken away by the Musca, using folded deer skins. They hid the valuables in nearby hills. <laughs> September 1537 Conquest of Shugamuxi After the victory of Gonzalo de Quesada of the important city of Hunza, with some of his men he continued to Swamix, the sacred city of the sun, ruled by the Araka called Shugamuxi. The Temple of the Sun, built to worship the sun god Sue, one of the two main deities in the Musca religion, was a temple filled with gold, emeralds, cloths and mummies. On his way to Swamix, presently called Sagamoso, the troops spent the night in Pipa. On August 25, 1537, other sources state a date in early September, the troops arrived in the Araca Valley around Suamix. While Gonzalo Jimenez de Quesada ordered his men to leave the Sun Temple for the time being, two of his soldiers entered the temple at night and found the mummies sitting on elevated platforms inside. Their torches accidentally set the temple, made of wooden poles and clay, on fire. Before, the conquistadors had looted the temple and taken more than 300 kilograms 660 pounds of gold, worth 80,000 ducats at the time, not taking into account the emeralds, fine cloths and other valuables. Topic: 1537–38 Bogotá Savannah Conquests At the start of 1538, when the troops were exhausted after almost two years in foreign terrain, the soldiers asked what was their payment for the conquest they had done. De Quesada divided the conquered treasures over his men, 40,000 pieces of fine gold, 562 emeralds and tumbaga gold copper silver alloys. Foot soldiers received 520 pieces each, horse riders the double amount, captains 20-80 pieces, generals 3,640 and some pieces were given as prizes for the most distinguished soldiers. Masses were organized to honor the many dead soldiers during the campaign and part of the treasure was given to Juan de las Casas. De Quesada was not pleased to hear about the advancement of another group of conquistadors in the east, led by Nicolaus Fetterman, coming from later Venezuela across the Llanos Orientales. Another team of conquerors, commanded by Sebastián de Belalcazar, was coming from the south, originating from Quito. Gonzalo sent Hernán to meet the southern group who had traveled through the hot valley of Neva.
Topic: The 6th of August 1538 foundation of Bogota. One and a half year after the victory of the conquistadors on Tisquesusa, in the area of Toixaquio, the modern capital of Colombia was founded. Although some historians set the date at April 27, 1539, the common and celebrated date of foundation is August 6, 1538. The foundation was performed by the construction of twelve houses of reed, referring to the twelve apostles or to the twelve tribes of Judea, and the construction of a preliminary church, also of reed. Father Juan de las Casas held his first mass in the improvised church. The city was named Santa Fe de Bogotá, a combination of the Spanish city of Santa Fe and the Chipcha name of the southern Musca capital Bacata, meaning, enclosure outside of the farm fields. The newly established country, part of the Spanish Empire was called New Kingdom of Granada, after the place of birth of the brothers de Quesada in Andalusia, Kingdom of Granada. Later conquest expeditions <laughs> 1538 Battle of Tokarima and further conquest After the expeditions into the Musca territories and to the north, submitting Hunza and Shugamuxi, and the foundation of Bogotá, various other journeys were organized. Gonzalo Jiménez de Quesada himself went west and submitted the Ponche in the Battle of Tokarima, fought on August 20, 1538 in Tokarima, currently part of Cachapé. In this battle, the Spanish had allied with Sagipa, the new and last Zipa. De Quesada with only 50 soldiers and Sagipa 12,000 to 20,000 Gecha warriors strong beat the Ponche on 20 August 1538 and celebrated the victory. Sagipa was held by the new Spanish rulers on accusation of his illegal rule. The Spanish demanded the vast amounts of gold of the heritage of Tisquesusa. Initially Sagipa denied and went into hiding. When Sagipa saw the Musca lost faith in his rule he surrendered to de Quesada. Outraged by his refusal to hand over the treasure Sagipa was tortured with iron bars. In early 1539 the last Zipa died in the Spanish camp in Bosa as a result of the torments by the Spanish rulers. Topic: 1538 to 1539 Further conquest and foundations by Gonzalo. Topic: <laughs> April 1539 Return to Spain of Gonzalo, Sebastián, and Nicolaus. The three leaders of the conquest expeditions, Gonzalo de Quesada, Nicolaus Fetterman in Spanish called de Federman and Sebastián de Belalcazar, met in Bosa and agreed to travel back to Spain to ask for compensation for their exploration for the Spanish crown. Gonzalo assigned Hernán as interim governor of the new kingdom and chose the first mayor and council for the capital. The chaplain of the team of Fetterman, Juan Verdeo, was named priest. Most of the soldiers of the expeditions of Fetterman and de Belalcazar decided to stay in Bogotá, reinforcing the reduced troops of de Quesada. Without having found El Dorado, three years after his departure from Santa Marta, in mid-May 1539, Gonzalo Jiménez de Quesada returned to the Caribbean coast, to sail to Spain from Cartagena. After writing his book about the conquest, Epitome de la Conquista del Nuevo Reino de Granada between 1548 and 1559, Gonzalo Jiménez de Quesada would return to the New Kingdom of Granada in the second half of the 16th century to continue his quest for El Dorado in the Llanos Orientales, Hula and Tolima. Gonzalo de Quesada died in Suesca in 1579. Before embarking on a ship on the Magdalena River to take them to Cartagena, the three conquistadors founded their place of harbor, Panche Settlement Guadaqui on April 6, 1539. 1539 Conquest of Tundama Tundama, who ruled the northernmost part of the Musca Confederation from an island in the former lake around Tundama, already got notice of the burning of the Sun Temple, two years earlier and the submission of the neighboring indigenous groups, the Panche, Guan and others and told his Gecha warriors not to bow for the Spanish invaders. When one of his warriors suggested surrender was the best option, Tundama cut off his ears and left hand. The cacique declared a death war. 
against the Spanish and gathered an army of 10,000 Getcha warriors. To keep the conquistadores away, he sent a delegation of his people with emeralds, gold, and mantles to offer the Spanish with the promise that Tundama would surrender, bringing eight more of these. Gaining time, Tundama hid his treasures and prepared the defense of Tundama. On December 15, 1539, another Spanish captain coming from the south after conquering Peru and the Kingdom of Quito as part of the expedition by de Balalcazar, Baltasar Maldonado, entered the territories of Tundama and offered him a peace proposal if he would surrender. Tundama, informed by the Spanish murders of Zipa Tisquesusa and Zac Cuemanchitocha, did not accept and Maldonado attacked Tundama and his army on the island in Vargas Swamp, where 280 years later the Vargas Swamp battle by Simón Bolívar would be fought. Maldonado, enforced with 2,000 Yanacunas, indigenous prisoners of war from Peru and submitted people from Bacata and Ramiriqui, was accompanied by the Musca whose ears and hand had been cut off by Tundama. The Spanish conquistador with his superior weapons, cavalry and the inside knowledge of the earless Musca killed 4,000 Getcha warriors of Tundama. Seeing this battle was fruitless, Tundama fled to Sarinza to ally with the cacique from there and prepared a new attack on the Spanish and indigenous troops, losing again. The caciques of northern Boyaca convinced Tundama to not fight anymore and Tundama surrendered to the Spanish troops. Maldonado demanded huge quantities of gold and emeralds to pay his loss to the Spanish. When handing over the valuables, Maldonado deemed the payments not enough and before the end of the year Maldonado killed Tundama with a large hammer. <laughs> Spanish conquest in Musca history <laughs> Early colonial period After the foundation of Bogotá and the installation of the new dependency of the Spanish crown, several strategies were important to the Spanish conquerors. The rich mineral resources of the Altiplano had to be extracted, the agriculture was quickly reformed, a system of encomiendas was installed and a main concern of the Spanish was the evangelization of the Musca. On October 9, 1549, Carlos V sent a royal letter to the New Kingdom directed at the priests about the necessity of population reduction of the Musca. The indigenous people were working in the encomiendas which limited their religious conversion. To speed up the process of submittance to the Spanish reign, the mobility of the indigenous people was prohibited and the people gathered in resguardos. The formerly celebrated festivities in their religion disappeared. Specific times for the catechesis were controlled by laws, as executed in royal dictates in 1537, 1538 and 1551. The first bishop of Santa Fe, Juan de los Barrios, ordered to destroy the temples of the Musca and replace them with Catholic churches. The last public religious ceremony of the Musca was held in Ubac on December 27, 1563. The second bishop of Santa Fe, Luis Zapata de Cardenas, intensified the aggressive policies against the indigenous religious practices and ordered the burnings of their sacred sites. This formed the final nail in the coffin of the former polytheistic society. The transition to a mixed agriculture with old world crops was remarkably fast, mainly to do with the fertility of the lands of the Altiplano permitting European crops to grow there, while in the more tropical areas the soil was not so much suited for the foreign crops. In 1555, the Musca of Toca were growing European crops as wheat and barley and sugarcane was grown in other areas. The previously self-sustaining economy was quickly transformed into one based on intensive agriculture and mining that produced changes in the landscape and culture of the Musca. The system of encomienda consisted of handing over terrains and indigenous people to the encomenderos. In 1553, 300 to 500 indigenous people were provided to the encomendero of Cota. The encomendero then had to pay tribute to the Spanish crown. Topic: <inaudible> Modern historical revisionism. In modern anthropology studying the Musca and the tales of the conquistadors, especially Gonzalo Jiménez de Quesada, whose writings are the only primary sources that survived, efforts have been made to revise the descriptions of the Musca. The early Spanish chroniclers have written about cannibalism of various indigenous groups, stories that have later been refuted by experts. 
Also the idea that the Musca were a warlike people has been revised in the modern age, pointing to their successful trading, that even the Spanish scholars, such as First Bishop of Bogotá Juan de los Barrios, have praised in their writings. Various other researchers have taken caution in taking the early ethnographic accounts and the warfare status as unambiguously true. In early texts, the Musca were described as having to pay tributes to the caciques, an idea explained to be misunderstood, by anthropologist Carl Henrik Langebeck. All the conquistadors and later writers such as Pedro de Aguado, Pedro Simón, Juan Rodríguez Frial, Juan de Castellanos and Lucas Fernández de Pedrajita were men, introducing sexism into the history books. Many modern archaeologists and anthropologists of the Musca are female and have revised the role of the women in Musca society, with Sylvia Broadbent, Anna Maria Groot, Marianne Cardale de Shrimp and many others as notable examples. Also the description of the Musca Confederation as a stratified empire has been revised, most notably by Jorge Gamboa Mendoza. The stone fortress that has been described in Cajica by Spanish chroniclers may have been built after the conquest. Misunderstandings about the Musca originated from the difficulties in language. The Spanish used indigenous translators taken captive on their route and brought along from the coast, introducing errors in the understanding of the Chibcha of the Musca, that in many cases is very different from the other Chibchan languages. The word for one in Maiscuban is Ata, while in the closest related Chibchan languages of Colombia, one translates as Ubistia Uwa, Intoc Bari, and Titasa or Nye Chimila. Also about the names of the Zipa and Zac of the Musca when the Spanish conquistadors arrived in Musca territory, Tisquesusa and Quemanchitocha respectively, doubts have risen after investigation in the 21st century. The names of the rulers have their origin in the work Eligias de Verones Illustres de Indias written by poet Juan de Castellanos decades after the events of the conquest. The names of the rulers are possibly invented or modified by de Castellanos and taken over into later publications about the Musca by authors such as Pedro Simón. Modern research, by Jorge Gamboa Mendoza among others, has revealed that when the Spanish troops were entering the territories of the Musca, the Musca frequently presented other individuals instead of the rulers to the invaders. This strategy was to protect the Musca rulers and their valuables, of great interest to the Spanish who were in search of El Dorado. The modern anthropologists maintain that the names of the caciques were different. Bogota, for Tisquesusa and Yukonim, for Quemanchitocha, whose nephew was called Quimenza. Gamboa Mendoza mentions the omitting of information in the early Spanish chronicles about the participation of other indigenous groups and leaders in the conquest. What he describes as enemy, the cacique of Guadavita, allied with the Spanish to fight their own people. One of the most important sources for the Spanish conquest of the Musca, El Carnero, written by Juan Rodríguez Frial, son of soldier Juan Frial who served under conquistador Pedro de Ursua, has been critically reviewed as a literary creative collection of stories, anecdotes and rumors, mixed with common opinions of the time. See also <laughs> Notes <laughs>